Right, okay, the, this picture was um, obviously from the newspaper, but uh, they, and they went out yesterday. I was at a course in gerodontology, and uh, the reason I put it in is I've been to so many courses where at the back you'd see the presenter saying, well, you know, yeah, I know you can't do this on the health service. And we have a problem now that we just can't get access. You can't get access, you know, and there are lots of reasons for that. But this is the main one. There's the, the, the health service it says it'll provide everything. But, uh, you know, the nurses have gone on strike. Well, it's not the dentists. Certainly not the vast majority. Most went private because they wanted to provide good work. Uh, the dental corporates, some are extremely good. Um, and some aren't so good. Uh, and also the, the problem with the corporate is, is in effect they don't take responsibility for the work, but they put the, the people doing the work, which is all their staff, it's not just dentists, the receptionists, the, the nurses, everybody gets the grief. Um, I've got some grim experience of that myself. And the public, you, you know, the public as we know, uh, they're far more litigious than when I qualified. Um, we have twice as many cases than the last looked about uh, compared to America, and that's partly because of Partly because of these, these advertised. If you're not happy with your dentist, a few years back, then complain to us, and and we have to pay the GDC. You, you know, it's just you just couldn't make it up. And this uh, the dental law partnership, I think they're called. Yeah, yeah there's the, the dentist who uh, was with them. He's the highest paying de paid dentist I would imagine in the UK. He's got at least fifty solicitors working for him, uh, and yeah. It's, it's, it's the equivalent of ambulance chasing, and it's, it's just clearly wrong. But I mean, six times as many lawyers qualify as, as many medics. There used to be one you know, 100 years ago, it was the same number. And yeah, uh, politics, uh, they've just changed the sugar tax. Uh, I mean, they've backtracked on the sugar tax, they've backtracked on the thing about Facebook and. Um, youngsters seeing you know bad images it just big business just gets in the way for the individual and, and this is where we made a mistake and i made this video dental litigation is a problem it seems to have increased after the millennium the biggest dental negligence firm was established <laughs> yeah so so initially i made this when i was still working but i put it in spanish and and you know so what's happening now is it has improved so much the, this was made just by uh, following the, the, the text. And so all practices can kind of use this. But the problem is that, um, you know, to be interested in your job, you want to you do extra learning, but some of the learning is a bit dull. And, um, and if you specialise, you know, actually, you can look at it both ways, in that you're doing it for your own interests, uh, but you're running out of people who can afford it. And we have this problem now that, you know, general dentists are, are struggling to do anything um, that's remotely tricky because, one, they'll get sued, and um, if, it, if you get a poor outcome, which isn't the same as doing it poorly, and the same thing we've always had about um, what is supervised neglect, when clearly supervised neglect depends who you're talking to. If you've been neglecting that tooth for 30 years and it's still there, that's not neglect. Anyway, this is the state we're going to be in. I always think of the Hunger Games. In, I just, if you've seen it, you'll know that there are a few people who have seem to have everything. And here, there's probably a bit of Botox going on. There's probably a bit of dermal filler. She probably had ortho. And she, yeah, she, she probably had some cosmetic, uh, what is it, uh, composite buildups. I mean, it's, um, <laughs> we need to get a balance. But I can understand all dentists doing this because you, you know, it's an easier way to make money without uh, such a threat of being sued. So, yeah, so th th this is something that we should do. And, um, yeah, so this is, a, this is, this was recent and it, it, you can just paint the teeth with a solution and uh, it'll h help arrest decay and give you time if you're working for someone who, had, in this instance, had cancer. Um, but on the other hand, it'll work for people, at, at, you know, it works extremely well for, for children 
And as this shows, it's the outcomes are the same if you do the, what we call art or if you just do this. And this can be, you know, quite frankly, this can be done by, well, I would imagine, a dental nurse, never mind a therapist. Um, hygienists can do it. If they can paint on um, sealants, then they can do this. And uh, they have more, more likely to get access to care homes or want to do care homes because, you know, you don't need to have great skill to do this. Um, and these things are, ju are just not used in the UK when they're used more abroad and they're getting used more and more. Um, so we should be doing that. And yeah, when it comes to root fillings, again about specialisation, if you do a root filling on the health service, uh, we used to get paid uh, back in the day less <laughs> uh, than it costs in the instruments to, that you would use. And so we all know this, the root fillings I d did at the end, I hardly had any failures and it was not great shakes, but there's lots of stuff about this that's, um, that's poor. So this, is, this was um, showing, it was something that the chief dental officer mentioned when we had the, when COVID uh, and recommended the thing before, silver diamine fluoride, recommended doing the SVEC technique for root fillings all things that most people were blissfully unaware of, and I'm talking about the dentists now. And the other thing was about teledentistry, and we should be doing that. As you can see here, this isn't ideal. If you have a you know a root filling from a, um, a specialist, he would hope to get you know about 98% success or a good outcome, um, and it'll probably probably cost you 750 pounds. Some dentists might be prepared to do this on these spec technique on the on the health service if if it still exists, but not if they're going to get sued when you get a poor outcome that just basically means to need to pay the seven hundred and fifty for the expert room filling. And now we've got yeah teledentistry. So, so the the the, the iPhones the the smartphones can take great photos. So you just need to know how to manipulate your soft tissue. It's not so difficult, not so easy to show the insides of the teeth, but these are taken using a camera. And these cameras, uh, the first camera I bought was like six, seven thousand um, pounds. And this is just from a camera I bought on the internet for, for 40 pounds. And uh, next year it'll be 30 pounds and it'll be better. Uh, and we just need someone to look at them to tell you, you know, how long you need to come in or to give you oral hygiene advice. It's ridiculous that you have to come in and it's very green. You know, you can get the advice you need or your child needs over the phone uh, from and we can both be at home <laughs> doing it, which frees up surgery time, which might help with waiting lists. Yeah, and this is really for our mental health. I used to run a peer review for, for 10 years and um, we stopped doing it because we stopped getting paid for it. But basically, we should do it for our mental health, and it's the best way to learn. So if I went on a course or anyone else went on a course, we could always uh, ring back. And the, one of the reasons I've ended up doing this is a guy gave a talk on, on cancer, as you know, and uh, we need to be checking ourselves once a month for cancer. <laughs> I did a, a survey and asked patients what they prefer to check themselves once a month or to be seen once a year by the dentist. And everyone said once a year, and I thought I must have just phrased it, or what's it called, framed the question incorrectly. So there's a few th things here, you know, so I'm allowed to say, I, th I think I lost the one on root fillings. There's a one on root fillings, but, oh yeah, it's bottom right. But this is the one I was going to show, because it's, it's minimal. Yeah, and the guy started in the garner, so it's cutting the tree down. Anyway, so you can read this, so pause uh, and read it. But basically... This is using uh, um, scanning equipment in a different way. And um, yeah, straight out of practice, and it's straight into practice, I wouldn't want to be doing this. But I've been seeing this, trying to keep this lady going for many years, and she used to see the hygienist every three months. And um, yeah, so this is what you're left with. And um, yeah, so she never ever had, uh, she never ever had a denture. And so it is minimal de invasive dentistry, but it's just, there wasn't much to work with. All right, so this is me. I'm still gonna fight against the, oh, it's next door doing the leaves. Oh.
Just, oh yeah, as on my t-shirt. Just do it. Worst comes to the worst. You... <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a bit loud. Um, should we do it again? <laughs> I don't think I can. But anyway, I think ITs are not easier than dentistry. That's what I was saying, is that if you make a mistake in IT, you can go back, but I'm not going to go back. And this is because I want to spend more time in my van. But I, th I want to share what we've what we've learned over the years. Dentistry now, I think, is going back, not forward. These are people that supported me when I've tried to promote prevention. Um, there's an awful lot we can do. Um, I don't think I put the slide up, um, but I did make a, a webinar. But so if you go for teethforlife.org.uk then um, yeah I probably ought to put that slide in <laughs>